entire body intact, as in I can move my fingers, lift my legs, I don't have a broken neck, I'm just fine. And why am I appreciating God is because last week, Tuesday, I was coming from Lagos to Ibadan, and I had a very terrible accident that I know beyond reasonable doubt that if it hadn't been for God, if it hadn't been for the mercy of God and the covering that we enjoy in this place, um, I may probably not be standing here. What happened? We had gotten to um, close to Ibadan in front of Dominion University. It was raining, and I remember that um, when the rain started, my driver told me that he would have to slow down because of the rain, and I said, fine, and we're coming. But when we got to the front of that Dominion University, somebody called me, I picked my car, I was talking to the person, and then the next thing, I knew that the tires of the vehicle skidded off the road and the driver lost control of the vehicle. The next thing, the vehicle that was on straight road became sideways and faced the culvert, that culvert on that smooth, smooth part of the road, faced the culvert head front and hit the culvert, you know what, a very great impact with a very loud sound. The next thing, the vehicle turned round. It was like something was controlling that vehicle. The vehicle turned round, you know, like the kind of thing you watch on, on, in a film, and faced Lagos. Then the next thing, it turned sideways again and hit the covet, and turned round again and faced the badon and then turned sideways again and hit the covert. Then, on hitting the covert the third time, it swerved, going into the bush, and then it came back. And then the next thing, the vehicle came back right on the road, and the driver was driving it. Then we had to park. People of God, that's the vehicle that our sister here was in, as we can see on the media screen. Please there's, go ahead, Ma. There's more to it, more to it than what you're saying. One, I sat at the rear of the vehicle and I did not use seat belts. Now, I'm somebody that is highly safety conscious. Uh, it's rare that I would travel sitting at the back of a car and I won't use seat belts. Anywhere in the car, now, even within town, I use seat belts. But this particular day, I was so busy, I was so preoccupied. My phone was ringing, I had so many approvals, so many things, I was busy, I was, that I didn't remember to use the belt. Now, when the accident was going on, it was a six minute accident. And the distance that the vehicle covered, I can say, rough estimate would be like quarter of a kilometer. Because when they were picking the pieces, a lot of things scattered from the vehicle. When they were picking the pieces, from where the vehicle stopped to where the accident started, you walk like 10 minutes. So what, it was a very serious one. And while the accident was you know, going on, I knew that at a point I was hitting my head on the roof of the car. You know, it was just throwing me about. Hit my hand, my shoes pulled off, I wore his socks, my socks pulled off, my phone broke, the contents in my bag scattered, everything scattered. Even when the, we eventually packed or pulled off the road, people were
were saying, oh, 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 uh, the vehicle was already smoking, that they had to quickly find a way to open the bonnet, remove the battery, the tire that deshaped. It was like everything was just upside down. And of course, I called for help from my workplace. Within 25 minutes, I was rescued from the accident scene. And um, I remember that the people that witnessed the accident, so many people parked. And when I came out, everybody was like raising their hands in the air, praising the Lord. One old woman walked up to me and said, Madam, whichever God you are serving, just keep serving it. Pull those hands together for God of our Father, God of Senior Prophet G.F. Abdetuvel. They said that um, some mechanics were on the side of the road, that they already moved away from that spot because the way they were looking at the vehicle, they were expecting that the, the vehicle would some assault and land on that spot. So everybody had moved away and they were surprised that. Uh -uh. the same vehicle went back on the road. We still drove it for like two minutes before we eventually pulled off the road. And while I was not now leaving the accident scene, I saw another accident that happened like five minutes after my own accident. It was a commuter bus 18 passengers, passengers bus, this Lagos Ibadan bus, was exactly the same thing that happened to the bus. The tires skidded off the road, the driver lost control of the vehicle, and the bus somersaulted. It threw people out. I witnessed it while the road safety people were picking dead bodies, parking it in the vehicle. I counted five. That was 25 minutes after my own accident. And I looked at it, said, God, if not for God, if not for the God of senior prophets, GF, I did to bury. Somebody celebrate Jesus, celebrate Jesus. Lagos twice. 
I keep traveling like as if somebody is going to the toilet and it's the same driver that drives me. So it's not as if he, he, he didn't know what he was doing. He looked at me and he told me, he said, Mother, you see, I'm not the one that drives that vehicle. That when that accident started, he actually wanted to stretch his leg to smash the brake. But that what all he can explain is that something held his two legs folded. That he became stiff. He couldn't stretch it. And that his two hands was firm on the steering wheel. He didn't leave the steering. He said it was like another hand was on his hands and held the wheel. Till eventually stopped. Okay, ma. Can you tell the people of God what actually happened or what were you doing? What did you do before the accident happened? Well, Can you remember anything? Let me tell you. Two days before that time, different things had started happening to me. In fact, I had this feeling of carrying a heavy load and I couldn't place it. I remember that at a point I had to I called Mommy Adetuberu. I called her on the phone and I told her that I wanted to see her. And she said, what for? I said, I just want to kneel down. You put your hand on my head and just pray for me. That that's the way I feel. But I didn't have the time. And eventually, she herself, she called me back. And she said, I feel that weight too. I'm not going to sleep. I'm going to pray for you. And the following morning, she called me back. She said, I don't even know where to start and finish. But all that I know that I did was, I prayed for everything pertinent unto you. And she started mentioning it. I prayed for you. I prayed for your husband, your children. I prayed for your job. I prayed for your business. I prayed for traveling. I prayed for safety, healing, whatever, whatever. And I said, thank you, mommy. I went to Lagos on Sunday. I remember that on Monday night, I was in the hotel. I was going to sleep. Then I called her again. And we prayed. And we still talked about you know, that this burden, this weight. Then when we were coming on Tuesday morning, I remember that even I told my driver that I was going to leave at 7.30. So he moved from his own hotel to my own hotel. I knew it was at 7.30, it was on point, ready for us to go. I woke up at 7.30 look through the window, I saw the vehicle downstairs and I'm like, I don't feel like traveling. And I even thought that, okay, let me call Overland and find out if they have a flight. Because they do have flights that shuttles Ibadan, Lagos. And let me go by here, back to Ibadan and let the driver drive by himself because I didn't want to travel. Eventually, I went back to sleep. And I eventually left my hotel room at like 10.30, reluctantly. Then when I got to redeem, when we got to redeem, that thing came back again. So I started praying. Now, what I really wanted to do was, I do listen to prophets' uh, worship on YouTube. I, I will open it, just join, and just slip into it. And it's like the experience is always like, like it's physically present and in church. So I opened the YouTube, and there was no network, so I couldn't do anything. Then I knew my sticker was in my bag. I always have it in my bag. So I just placed my hand on my bag, and I started praying. And what was I praying for? I was just saying, Lord, I don't know what it is, but if by adventure I've said anything, I've done anything, or I've thought anything, 
that is not of God. It's not even a question of maybe it's a sin. As long as it's not of God, Lord, touch me. I hide myself under the blood of the Lamb. Let it cleanse me. I give you my heart. Just mold it as you will. Those were my prayer points. I give you my mind. Renew it. I give you my will. Conform it to your will. Envelope me by your presence. Cocoon me by your love. Cage me in such a way that when I turn to the right, I turn to the left. Anywhere I turn to is all of you and none of me. And I start speaking in tongues. And that, that was, was it. it. Somebody clap for time. Jesus. <laughs> Our Father in the Lord, we always say that if you have the sticker with you, it's like you have him with you. And our Father in the Lord, we always say that anybody under this canopy, he has sent his angels. God sent his angels ahead. Each every one of us has our own angel on this mountain. We are under a cover. Somebody celebrate Jesus. Well, all I know is, I remember too that I also prayed. Um, I remembered prophets and something tells me I'm under covering. That I'm fine. I know that as I was praying, the presence of God was actually really strong in the car at that time. I could feel it. And now, after the accident, of course, any accident that have that kind of major impact, there's, it takes time for one to recover. But in my own case, I was I didn't really feel it. I was able to recover. If I didn't tell you that I had an accident last week, Tuesday, you probably wouldn't know. Even everybody around me, they cared for me so much like they were expecting that something will still happen. But somehow, I took my drugs, the drugs that the doctor gave me for like three days. After some time, I felt that even the drug was affecting me. So I converted the dosage of the drug to my sticker, more touch on the sticker. So I left the drug. I didn't use it again. Somebody clap for Jesus. Here we are having our sister, our dear sister before us, giving thanks to God. She said from our testimony, from what we heard from her, right there, even after our home an accident happened and she could even record five dead people ourselves but here we are this morning our sister here is looking radiant before Jesus if you are putting those hands together put it together very well for Jesus this is a great testimony because from what she said earlier she said she's thanking God because she could stand like this before us She's not here with neck collar. She's not here with bandage now. She's even jumping. She's giving glory to Jesus. Yes, if you are putting those hands together, it is for Jesus. It is for Jesus. It is for Jesus. We thank God for that safety. We thank God for, for delivering you. We thank God for being your covering, ma. And we say that this testimony is permanent in Jesus' name. Affliction will not rise again in Jesus' name. Um, so I want to ask, the sticker you prayed with, how much did you pay for that um, sticker? The price of that sticker is far above rubies. I can't afford it. <laughs> so it means I didn't pay anything. Somebody clap for <laughs> Jesus. So Ma, what, what can you say about the God that you encounter? or that you keep encountering on this mountain? All I know is that you see this God is a faithful God. Whichever way is faithful. Beyond or in spite of who we are 
or what we have. The Bible says that he never sleeps, he never slumber. He's on point. You are in the fire, he's right there with you. You are heart of the fire, he's right there with you. Every time you call on his name, he answers. The people of God, yes, put those hands together for Jesus. Our sister here has said it all. God is faithful. You are on point. If you are here this morning, you are on point. Thank you so much, Ma, for coming to share your testimony. God bless you, people of God. Let's appreciate God for every testimony that we have had.